Okay. This is Our Real Truth with Beatzilla, PDX Official. I am Beatzilla, PDX. All right. Let me get this going over here. All right. How is everybody doing? Okay. All right. Yeah. Quite a bit going on. Business. Yes, it is. So, as I said, this is another broadcast of Our Real Truth with Beatzilla PDX official. And this is also... This is my podcast, which is on Anchor FM, Spotify, iTunes, and Google Podcasts. Um, I'm also simulcasting this on YouTube as well, which would be my Beatzilla PDX official uh, YouTube page. You can follow me at Beatzilla PDX on Instagram, and on Twitter, Beatzilla PDX, and uh, on Facebook, Beatzilla PDX. And again, of course, on my YouTube channel once more, Beatzilla PDX Official. And then if you need to email me or uh, have any questions, you can email me at ourrealtruth at gmail.com. That's ourrealtruth at gmail.com. This will not be long. Um, you know, interesting week. Starting with, um, you know, like uh, February 1st. Oof. Boy, with these incidences here, um, if you can see the screen, uh, that would be uh, Jeffrey Spade about to fire his weapon at the Goy, fan, uh, the Goy couple, um, husband and wife who got an altercation with uh, their neighbor over um, shoveling snow into his property. So that dispute uh, escalated extremely quickly, which something that's kind of weird. Um, I, I did a, oh, come on, really. I did a little bit of investigation on Jeffrey Spade. Come to find out this dude is actually uh, an environmental engineer, or at least he was an environmental engineer um, with a master's from uh, Villanova. Uh, so this guy was no dummy. It's kind of odd that he just kind of freaks out uh, over snow and uh, marks out his neighbors uh, in the middle of the street, uh, as everybody probably has now seen. So these videos have been going viral. Also, the other video that you are seeing right now is of uh, a Maryland um, deputy that was attacked by the man you see in the uh, black sweatshirt, whose name is uh, Kevin Coslo. He's uh, 52 years old. Um, so what you're witnessing there is the prelude to the end, um, which was happening there in this uh, picture. And, uh, you know, hey, there is a lot of people who were shook on Twitter uh, because the Kevin Coslo uh, shooting video was actually captured by a, uh, by a black man. Uh, and a black man with certain uh, opinions uh, of the day. So needless to say, uh, suspected white supremacist Twitter and all over the internet have uh, went crazy over this. And, uh, you know, right to this point, um, Twitter's still blowing up. Uh, so this this has went viral. Um, and a lot of people are mad at a lot of us foundational black Americans for, I guess, for lack of better terms, uh, not showing the remorse that they would want us to show. But 
you know, that's not really our job. You know, um, our job is to take care of ourselves, to take care of our own, which we're doing. Uh, this situation really had nothing to do with us except for that this brother captured it on camera. Uh, so what happened is uh, this happened just uh, shoot, maybe two days ago. So, of course, uh, the brother, more information, uh, got this video uh, and it quickly went viral. Uh, I'm tagged in uh, one of the viral posts on Twitter. Ooh -wee. And the uh, comments are still coming in. Now, remember, um, well, a few shows back, I did on my YouTube channel about uh, preserving the image uh, of the dominant male society. Well, and you got to watch for when they send their agents out because uh, they, they know who to send out and who not to send out. So right now... Um, I guess they figured they will send out their fake black Twitter minions. Because that's what I would call it. Because you, you can always see the fake ones because they'll come with this, I have a pedigree and, and I'm black this, black that. But then they the reason why they are even vocal in the first place is because they're caping for the fallen person that had nothing to do with our community. To somehow say, we should look at this in some kind of way. What it is, is putting the subtle, the subtle spiritual, uh, mental uh, handcuffs on you, shall we say. To say, well, you know, when you see something, feel this kind of way about it. Versus when you see it, feeling how you feel about it. And one thing the brother said in the video is that he was glad to see something like this. He wants to see something like that. Well, a lot of people have a lot of issues with that. And in turn, their, their racism is just seeped to the surface. Uh, we're all kind of savages. Uh, I had uh, I, they dropping full in bombs. Twitter's not blocking none of that. By the way, yeah, Twitter's not blocking none of that. I mean, we got full in bombs dropped on us yesterday, and uh, you know we had to take individual action. Uh, because all of a sudden, Twitter, the, the Twitter people, the uh, moderators and all and such, uh, disappear. Imagine that. Yeah, when it got really racist, then all of a sudden, nobody has nothing to say. Can't really say that's new. But, you know, with that being said, let's just read a little bit of this story, shall we? So, uh... Okay, so like I said, the man's name was Kevin Coslow. He's a, uh, he was 52 years old. Uh, it says, a Montgomery County Sheriff's deputy fatally shot motorist, uh, shot a motorist on Saturday morning after the man caused two car crashes and attacked the deputy with a large piece of wood, Sheriff Darren M. Popkins said. The dead man was identified by authorities Sunday as Kevin Coslow, age 52, who lived in Montgomery, the town of Layton, Laytonsville, I guess. Uh, Y'all would have to help me out with that one. I'm not familiar with East Coast cities. Uh, close to where the incident occurred, the deputy's name has not been made public by county police who are investigating the shooting. Beginning about 8 a.m., Coslow had been driving erratically in the Volkswagen sedan heading out of Laytonsville, according to Popkins and Sergeant Rebecca Innocenti, a county police spokeswoman. One driver swerved off the road to avoid him, crashing into a telephone pole. Koslow then crashed head-on into 
a second vehicle at the intersection of on Olney Lay Laytonsville <laughs> Road and Fieldcrest Road, officials said. I'm butchering the names, I know, but it's all good. Um, the crashes and the strange driving led several people to call 911. Popkins said the Volkswagen rolled on for about 20 feet after the second collision. Coslow then got out of his car and used a large piece of wood to try to attack people he had just crashed into, Popkins said. The sheriff's deputy was driving to work in Rocksville, uh, Rockville and either heard about the 911 calls or just happened to be passing, Popkins said. He stopped at the scene to help when Cos. I don't know how that's, how that's odd. He stopped at the scene to help when Cos Coslo allegedly turned on him. Hmm. Popkins said the deputy appears to have unsuccessfully tried to use his taser to stop the assailant, who continued to attack with the piece of wood. It was at that point the deputy felt his life was threatened and did use force to stop this individual. Popkins said, Yeah, for those who have seen this video that everybody is so upset about on Twitter, uh, it's a little more to that. Um, from where the brother is actually filming, he's a ways back. This incident takes place at the intersection to which they're stopped way ahead of him, right? So he has to walk all the way back. So this incident is going backwards towards this man. Um, and then he finally said, man, shoot. I mean, because this dude has already uh, assaulted the police officer. I just think of Tamir Rice, who didn't even get a chance to hear freeze or put your hands on up or drop this weapon. Murked out seconds. This guy walked all the way back attacking this guy. Then he finally shot him and killed him. So people are mad that black folks are talking amongst black folks and saying, well, damn, how about that? And the fact that we are not uh, holding a candlelight vigil for such that crazed individual who was already on a rampage, this is... You just think of how usually when uh, uh, you see black folks getting harmed by the police, we hear about their poli police record. This person was in the process of assaulting multiple people and felony hit and run. So he was in the commission of a crime when this happened. Then assault on the police officer. But people, oh, there's so much more atrocious stuff. Yo. And this comes to my point. Learning to let go. See, we have to learn to let go of holding on to an image that is being destroyed before your face. Uh, we should not be beholden to it. I know I'm not. And I don't feel that I am beholden to uphold a false image of an oppressor. However, we do have quite a few out here that do believe that should be the case. Uh, and they are angry about it not being so with the new black media. So within a matter of a few days, we have now witnessed um, white on white death. And... Uh, you know, I don't think a lot of people understand what they're seeing or how to handle it. But, you know, these are the times we are in. And it's to be expected, really. You know, uh, if you believe in prophecy and, and, and things of, this, of that nature. Um, what are you seeing? You're seeing everybody turn against each other. People that were together turn upon each other. Why? Because nobody's at peace. Might be about time to disconnect from that. 
So that's why I'm saying we need to get into the process of learning how to let go. We we have gotten the forgiveness doctrine um, absolutely uh, shoved down our throat. And then, you know, also there's this other part here. There are those who, you know, because when when they see movements happening and things like that, they feel that, well, hey, I'm better than them. I should be able to do what they're doing or say what they're saying. And which is, by for all intents and purposes, true. Uh, if that was in their heart and in their minds already to do. But just to copycat or piggyback on something is not. So. That brings us to also learning to let go of the clout chasers. People who are not content with being themselves, therefore they create unnecessary drama to feel important. They obviously feel left out, unwanted, and ostracized by the very ones they admire. So in order to compensate for their feeling of inadequacy, They speak illy of slander and spread rumors in hope of damaging the character of those they admire, attacking them due to their own insecurities. These are not role models, icons, or real jiggers. (laughs) They are simply escapees from someone's asylum. Approach them with caution. And, uh, hey man, that says a lot right there. And that is something we need to learn to let go of. You dig? So with that being said, this was just going to be a very short podcast. Uh, broadcast, this is Our Real Truth with Beatzilla PDX Official. Uh, you can follow me at Instagram at Beatzilla PDX. You can follow me at Twitter at Beatzilla PDX. You can follow me at Facebook at Beats in the PDX. Of course, on uh, YouTube at Beats in the PDX Official. And the podcast on Anchor FM, Spotify, iTunes, and Google Podcasts is Our Real Truth. <laughs> Our Real Truth with Beats in the PDX. No, we're not doing that. Funny. That never works. Um, So again, like I always say, Babylon is falling. Babylon is falling. Let it fall and let us rise. Microsoft Teams is helping priority bicycles. Oh, wow. You really guys. Do you hear this? I don't even understand why this is open. Um, so like I said, our real truth with Beatzilla PDX official. I'm gone.